A few years ago, I decided to upgrade my kit greenhouse that was getting a little leaky with a geothermal greenhouse. And it was a ton of work to say the least. But I'm so glad I did it because it gave me four seasons of growing in New England zone 6B. Here's an updated tour. Now, right off the bat, something that I've changed, uh, if you've seen any of the other videos on the greenhouse, is I got rid of the screen door that I had on the inside section there and replaced it with a bug curtain with a, with a magnetic catch. It makes things so much easier. So I have a lot of still kind of the cool weather vegetables that are growing here in the greenhouse right now. I have a Tom Thumb lettuce growing, and then I have Merveille de Quatre Saison, which is a type of lettuce. And uh, they're still doing pretty good. Uh, I like to just cut the heads right off uh, and then let them regrow. I have kale started, and it's going pretty good, and I have broccoli going. On top of that, I have uh, some sweet peas, which I think I might have overwatered a little bit early on. And then I have uh, green bean pole beans uh, going here in the back. On the wall, I have strawberries growing in containers. Uh, I have radishes growing. And I have seedlings uh, growing over here in my starter area. And I have rise and shine squash started, which I'm super excited about the rise and shine because it's a vertical habit squash. Uh, so it doesn't vine out, it grows up almost like a bush. And I have some pawpaw uh, seedlings started that haven't, uh, they haven't broken the surface yet. In addition to that, I have some Melagita peppers uh, started and they look like they're actually doing pretty good. And so uh, that's the uh, general overview of what's growing in the greenhouse. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos about what a geothermal greenhouse is, here's the basic idea. You see this tube that's coming up out of the ground? Well, there's hundreds of feet of it below the ground underneath the raised bed that I built in the greenhouse. And the basic idea is there's as much air volume contained in that tube as there is air volume above ground inside the greenhouse. And so then what I do is I pull that air out of the ground with an inline fan, this fan here, and it's cool air because below the ground, it's about 50 degrees or below the surface of the ground. And so during the summer, during the hot months, 50 degree air blowing into the greenhouse is, well, it's almost like air conditioning. And the flip side of that is 50 degree air in a cold New England winter. Well, that's actually pretty warm. And so it cools in the summer and heats in the winter. Need I say more if you own a greenhouse? It's pretty awesome. On the exterior of the greenhouse, I clad the entire building with pallet wood shingles all the way around. And uh, there's a couple videos that I've made about that and how to do it. You'll also notice uh, that there is a hot air exhaust fan uh, on the upper side of the attic area of the greenhouse. And that obviously, in the summer months, gets rid of the hot air that's rising in the greenhouse. All of the windows on the greenhouse, with an exception of the roof panels, the clear polycarbonate panels, all of the windows that you see on the building, I got for free by searching around on uh, Craigslist and Facebook and places like that. A, a big chunk of this structure is just made out of free materials, including a lot of the wood. I just kept my eyes open uh, to find people that were getting rid of lumber and I snatched it up. This time of year, I actually replace a couple of the windows with frames that have hardware cloth uh, in them to act as screens. And so obviously what this does is it allows cool air to come in in the morning. It allows hot air to exhaust in the middle of the day. And above all, it prevents cabbage butterflies from getting in because they are the bane of my existence on any kind of brassica that I have growing on the rest of my property outside of the greenhouse and so it prevents them from getting in. But pollinators, not that I need that many inside the greenhouse, some pollinators can sneak in and out by means of these screens. 
Now, another aspect of this design that might seem counterintuitive at first glance is that right now, uh, I think it's about 10 o'clock, I just looked at my watch that I don't have. At about 10 o'clock uh, in the morning, there's still not sun on my greenhouse. And you would think, well, that's bad, right? Well, actually not really. Uh, I intentionally designed my greenhouse so that it only gets really hot sun for about six hours a day in the summer, in the early spring, during the winter, and in the late fall, all the leaves are down. And so because the leaves are down, then I'm getting a full blast of sunlight all of those cold months. But during the hot months, I'm actually not getting as much sun into the greenhouse as you might expect. And that's because the greenhouse is primarily designed for those cold months. I can grow things outside on the property when it gets, that gets sun like you would expect. But the greenhouse actually shines when it's cold outside. One additional feature I wanted to point out about my greenhouse is that I have a raised bed inside of it. And the raised bed is made up of gabion baskets. And you can see an example of gabion baskets in this uh, raised bed that I made outside. And basically a, a gabion basket is a, a metal basket, a metal cage that you put rocks into. And uh, it can use it as a retaining wall or all sorts of things. I chose to use them as a raised bed because rock is an awesome way to store heat. It's a great way to store thermal mass inside the greenhouse during those winter months when you need every degree of heat that you can find. Uh, what I did inside uh, the greenhouse is I wrapped uh, these gabion baskets uh, all the way around several times with a uh, professional grade weed barrier. And then I created a shelf on top uh, so that I can walk around on top of the bed. Uh, but it's a great way to store heat in a greenhouse, and so that's why I chose to do it. Another big project uh, that I did earlier this spring was I changed the supply side of my watering system. Uh, the, the process of getting water from my house up here to the greenhouse is challenging because I can't bury the line in most of the spots that it needs to go through, and so it has to be exposed to cold temperatures. And so what I did was I installed a heated garden hose uh, from the house to the greenhouse. Uh, you can see it, it's that blue line there. And so now that makes it possible for me to definitely have a safe, uh, warm water supply in the greenhouse when it's cold outside. So that's a basic kind of updated tour of the greenhouse. I'm sure you probably have questions. Um, I would be happy to help you out as best I can. Uh, knowing how hard it was for me to kind of cobble together answers uh, when I was building my geothermal greenhouse. So please let me know in the comments your thoughts, your concerns, your questions, and I will definitely respond. Uh, you might have noticed my t-shirt. I have a bunch of different t-shirts with uh, themes that apply to uh, things that we might be interested in, like keeping chickens and pulling weeds and things like that. So be sure to check out my shop. Uh, if you liked this particular video, I would really appreciate any thing that you can do by hitting that little like button, hitting the subscribe button, and of course hitting the bell button so that you're notified when I post videos. All of that regular YouTube stuff. Uh, if you made it to this point in the video, I salute you. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And uh, well, if you like this video, you might also like these videos. <laughs>